with Joanne Associates. She joins us here in our Singapore studios. And great to have you here. I would think that, you know, getting the approval and, and buying the, that stake in Global Crossing is the easy part. The, you know, the difficult part would be what to do with it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what STT has done at this point, hopefully successfully in the near future, is to purchase a, a company that has gone under for a reason or has, has financial difficulty for a reason, and that is this market is really tough. So now at this point, STT has come out publicly and said that they're actually going to manage and operate this cable system, where a couple months ago, I think I speculated on this show that they were in this just for an ROI, or for, the, for the return. Right. Apparently, that's not the case. They're actually planning to manage the cable system and to sell the capacity, the product that Global Crossing has on that system. So they're coming into this um, with, with a, a lot of difficulty and a big challenge in the future once they get beyond this relatively small hurdle of, of purchasing the company. Now one of the reasons why they, they managed to calm fears uh, of the U.S. government is the fact that they, they had a security pact, a national security pact in the sense that part of uh, the management would involve U.S. Uh, nationals in that sense. Will this make it difficult uh, for management to actually get anything done? Oh, uh, um Perhaps, although I think that this security issue is really a relatively minor issue in comparison to everything else that's going to have to occur. The security issue is really, um, I think, a bit crazy personally. It's, it's, there is, while every operator, undersea fiber optic cable operator, maintains a level of security, once you go from one network to another, you've essentially lost any, any guarantees that Global Crossing has made with respect to their own security. By, by then, in order to carry for their customers global traffic, right. they've got to purchase capacity and they lose that level of security. Again, all, all cable operators maintain a, a level of security. It's in their best interest and right. they won't sell their capacity otherwise. But yeah, so I, you know, it's, it's um, I think management-wise, it, it might add a little bit of difficulty, but I think overall, um, what they're going to have the most difficulty with is the marketplace. So it's, where do you think the market is going? I mean, obviously, it, it is uh, improving somewhat, you don't think, with, with capacity. You know, as, as we go on, as more and more people get on broadband, as more and more of this capacity is getting used up. Right. Well, what we see is demand continues to increase. Nobody ever wants to go backwards. Once they get 10 megs, they want 20. Once they get 20 megs, they want 40. No one ever steps back from that. The problem is, right now, there are carriers who have excess capacity. They've got, and they're utilizing less of it than they have in the past. So there's a secondary market. They're essentially selling off some of their capacity mm -hmm. because of their own financial difficulties. That takes some of the business away from companies like Global Crossing. That's secondary market is certainly limited and it's going to be probably another depending on the route another year to two years before that secondary market sells out shorter in some places right. the other thing we've got is a just-in-time inventory situation nobody the carriers no longer plan 18 months in the future like they used to um, and in the old days no one would ever utilize 50 percent of what was on their cable systems now they're utilizing up to 90 percent because they can purchase just in time because there's a lot of capacity on the marketplace mm -hmm. it's a situation that stt perhaps has an advantage with mm -hmm. because they come in without all the old um, tried and true ways of selling capacity maybe they'll be innovative and it certainly presents an opportunity for them to come in and and really attack this market in an innovative fashion and certainly hopefully they they will have the patience then to wait until things get better well sure I mean they can start anytime Global Crossing is always innovating themselves right. and they've just announced a new voice service and so there are things that Global Crossing has continued to do so the company is a very I've always felt a very good company it's just a matter of recovering from the market and the financial difficulties. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Time's run out. Thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Anne Le Boutelier there of T.